My name is James Abbott. I'm 37 years old. SubhanAllah, I was born in Stamford in Lincolnshire. I went to a, I think it was an Anglican school, a Christian school, and Sunday school also. Um, and one memory I just remember was reading the story of David and Goliath, SubhanAllah, and uh, how Jesus turned the bread into a multi to feed the multitude. Uh, my father being Christian and also my mother at that time and subhanAllah I had a good time in, in Stanford. They, they brought me up very well, me and my sister. My sister is uh, two years younger than me. She's married recently and uh, she remains Christian um, as does my dad. Uh, so when I was five we moved to Cambridge and uh, my, my parents I think wanted me to have a good education there, they wanted me to go to the college, the university there. Um, so we, uh, we got established in a little good school, primary school, me and my sister. And, uh, and things carried on pretty normally until uh, have been about 16 um, and then my parents split up um, for usual reasons you know just too much stress at work and things like that so um, I, uh, I started growing up um, as a teenager I went to a secondary school and uh, so, but uh, then I started to lose uh, my religion, you know, my Christianity. Um, I hadn't really thought about God for very much since I'd been at school, primary school. Um, and to the point that later I actually started disbelieving in God. Um, SubhanAllah. And then when I was, when my parents split up, around about that time I, I started looking for something deeper in my life um, and uh, I turned to uh, New Age philosophy um, this was very fascinating for me at the time talking about sort of the cosmological um, reality of things and concepts that blew my mind so I, I, I didn't have much success with it I took up Christianity again and uh, started going to church and started reading the New Testament, um, which I also found very fascinating, some of the teachings. And, but again, I couldn't put them into practice in my like, modern day life. So what happened was, uh, I started giving all my money and spending all my money as much as I could, you know, buying everything just to get my financial situation down to zero and uh, it's being a spendthrift I suppose um, but um, you know I couldn't keep this up for very long because obviously money was running out and I started taking communion at the church and uh, this led to drinking more alcohol um, which I hadn't been doing for a long time uh, and um, I, uh, I, was, I, we, I met a couple of Christian friends and also a Jewish person, Jewish boy, um, for a drink one night. And I, I'd been very impressed by a, an article in The Guardian about Messianic Jews. And I, I was thinking maybe this is the path for me. And so I asked this Jewish lad, what would it be to? What would it take to be a Messianic Jew? And he said, uh, you'd, "You'd have to abandon the idea that Jesus is the Son of God." So I did, and um, so I started. I, I I abandoned Christianity at that point, and uh, started to experiment with Judaism. Um, 
so I was wearing you know the sort of the black clothes as much as I could and trying to live by the teachings of the Old Testament the Torah as we have it today the first five books of Moses in the Old Testament where he instructs the children of Israel to offer countless sacrifices, burnt offerings and whole offerings, of lambs, goats, sheep, cows, oxen, also grain offerings, flour offerings, bread offerings, and also libations of, upon libations of wine. I took this to mean that I should consume as much of these things as possible morning and evening. So there I was making as much unleavened bread as possible, cooking lamb dishes, mince, and red wine as much as possible. And I was living with my mother at the time and she was vegetarian and she didn't drink alcohol. And I was annoying her greatly she would wake up in the morning and there would be the smell of fried and roasted lamb coming from the, from the kitchen and wine and she got so anxious about me. And I couldn't keep annoying her like this indefinitely. So I knew something was wrong. I was just unaware of what it was and I didn't know how to, to progress or anything. So there I was one evening, without a job, without faith, near alcoholic, and I came across my friend Hussein. Back to my uh, date of reversion. The night was an autumn night. Um, for me, it was pretty much an ordinary walk. Um, this time I hadn't had a bottle of wine, <laughs> but uh, I was still sort of delirious. Um, and uh, I've never noticed it before, but there was this kebab trailer, as I say, um, parked next to a pub, and this, this guy was serving kebabs. I guessed he must be Islamic from the, the way he had appeared. And I, as I remember, yeah, I think I did ask him, are you Muslim? And he said, yes. But he said, are you Muslim to me? I said, no. And I said, can I be Muslim? And he said, yes. Um, I was thinking, is it possible for a white guy like me to like, abandon what my mum and dad have taught me and you know, take up something completely new to me? Beforehand, I'd, I'd been at college, and I had a friend who was um, Muslim um, for a short period, and he, he was telling me a little bit uh, about it all. Um, but I'd never really in researched into it at all. So I, I was fascinated by religion, the monotheistic religions, and. Uh, wasn't wasn't finding any joy in Christianity or Judaism, um, so there I was asking if I could like become Muslim, and he he said, "Yeah, okay, oh, that's good." And he he said, "There's a guy in London who I'd like to meet. Um, he's very you know very clever and capable of." Um, Islam, Islamic teachings, more than he he was himself, and he said, uh, you know, come back tomorrow. We'll we'll go down and see this guy. And I thought, no, hang on a minute. This guy's probably a terrorist. Um, I thought, you know, a very influential Muslim in London. He might like be leading me astray or something. So I didn't go back the first night, but I went back the next night, and we did actually go down and see his friend. A bit later, turned out to be a very nice man, or not a terrorist. <laughs> um, uh, and 
yeah, so I took Shahad with him. I was introduced to the fundamentals of Islam by Hussein, stating the most important things you need to know when you start out as a convert Muslim. And one of these obviously was the prayer. He taught me how to bow and kneel and prostrate and how to wash the wudu beforehand. And I started learning this from him. And I used to go back every night to where he was working, except on, a, on his, uh, his off days. Um, he would serve his customers, he would cut the, the kebab lamb and fry the chips and roast the bread and everything like this. But at the same time, he would be telling me hadiths of their holy prophet, peace be upon, peace be upon him and his pure family. Looking back on it now, I felt it's a necessary stage of my development. Um, it was a good transition from like Christianity to um, Shiism. Uh, so I'm not very comfortable about talking about it, but I, I, uh, I lived as a Sunni for about, must have been about nine years. Um, went through various stages of my life, development, spiritual development, um, testing you know, all the teachings that I was in use out and trying to learn more and trying to practice what I knew more and more. Um, and uh, to the day that I became Shia about uh, half a year ago, um, and uh, it, that again, it seems like a natural evolution of uh, my progress as, you know, as a Muslim. Looking back on it, on those years since my reversion until today, um, which is which has been the most difficult part of my life, I just feel that it, being a Muslim has helped me through a lot of changes and uh, a lot of problems. Um, and from my family's point of view, I believe that they, you know, they're very relaxed about me now, more than they ever have been. Um, even since I was I first started out as a Muslim, they they were they were very um, understanding and tolerant and encouraging. Um, and I put this down to the sheer fact that it's I believe the true path. And uh, you know. If you believe in God and uh, don't abandon Him, then not only will your life in the hereafter be sorted out, but your life in this world will too. So, yeah, um, that my sister, my mum, my dad, and also my other relations, they've all relaxed their worries about me now. Uh, so we, we get on a lot better. And I don't um, try to um, distance myself from their beliefs. So I don't know what it was, but my mum and dad just started to relax about me. And they would, uh, these days, they, you know, they're very happy. I used to argue a lot with my dad, sometimes with my mum too. Um, but these days we just we just don't get into arguments. I don't know why. I think it must be because of the God factor. Um, I mean, at least my dad believes in some sort of Lord, you know. Alhamdulillah, praise be to God, you know. Um, he 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 gives you a, a way to get out of every difficulty, every difficulty. Um, and this is what I've been following, which is, you know, the faith of my heart, and and that has influenced a lot of um, the way that I've started to 
look and think about the world as well. So yeah, I changed my name to Mikhail, which is one of the names of the angels in Islam. Um, the angel who governs the nature and I think the wind and the sea and things. And uh, I lived with that name for maybe eight years, something like that, nine years. And uh, and then uh, at one point I, I just decided I needed to get out of Cambridgeshire, escape from everything and try to live my life in a new way. But uh, then I started to go to a mosque in Norwich um, and they, the guys there gave me another name called Abdul Salam. And uh, I, I, I adopted this name for a few months. <laughs> but then when I became Shia, I, I was talking to one of the brothers there at the Islamic Centre and he, he said he suggested that I changed it to Muhammad Mehdi and uh, asked, started asking people to call me by this name instead. Most of the Quran has you know, captivated me and interested me. Um, in particular, I'd say in Surah Al-Fatiha, the first surah, the first chapter, has been most important because it's the foundation of prayer and it's obviously central to all, all schools of thought in Islam. So there's that. And also um, Surah Ar-Rahman, um, chapter entitled The Most Gracious, entitled The Most Gracious, saying repeatedly, you know, which of the lessons of your Lord do you jinn and men deny? I still can't fathom it, but I know it's been one of the important um, verses for me. Um, and uh, also another chapter that's influenced me is, has been Al-Isra, The Night Journey. Um, which describes the uh, the, the miracle, miraculous journey of Muhammad from Mecca to Jerusalem um, when he ascended into the heavens and met the prophets and led them in prayer. And uh, personally, I think that M Moses Salih Islam was Muslim. Um, I think that's the general teaching of the Quran and. Islam on the whole, um, not only Moses alayhi salam, but also Jesus alayhi salam, and also Abraham and Noah, peace upon them all. We know, we, there's a verse that says we, 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 we make no distinction between any of the prophets. So we have to follow these you know, wonderful men who delivered the message of Allah to various peoples at various times. And then when, when we thought there would be no more prophets, appeared Muhammad, peace be upon him, his holy progeny, and gave us the teachings of the Quran and his hadith. He, Moses said, uh, Muhammad, peace be upon him, his holy progeny, said, I leave you two things, the Quran and the al bayt his family. So, these things, you know, they've shaped my understanding of the world as well. And my social life now is basically pretty much either at college or at the Islamic Centre. Um, and, you know, that's all I need at the moment. At present I'm uh, doing three days a week at college on horticulture and this requires that I work one day a week at the National Trust House. So my life from here is you know, looking on it into the future. I want to finish my course successfully, start proper work, 
you know, professional work. I want to get married, um, inshallah, have kids, um, inshallah, if Allah wills, keep on the path that I'm on until the day I die. And for that reason, go to paradise. So, this seems like a sort of elevated, lofty, abstract thing to want, but it's the meaning of a life, is to seek the pleasure of Allah now, of God, so that He rewards me and, and, and forgives me and uh, saves me from hell. Um, and I think this is the meaning of most people, if not everyone's life. Um, you know, we all want the best for ourselves, for our loved ones, and inshallah, when, when we're all called to account to see him, we will be given this, this beautiful place, the eternal abode, and all that that means, um, which are like beautiful maidens that you find in paradise, which are given to you. So, whatever you do, unless you forget God completely for the rest of your life, he will forgive you. Alhamdulillah, all praise be to God. You know, I've come a long way from you know Christian baby, um, other religions, Sunni to Shia. You know, it's all one path. Um, I don't know why. I don't know what about what happens with destiny. I haven't really thought about this very much, but I do believe that we live our own paths, we have to follow our own uh, will and that is more and more influenced by God as we get closer to Him. So whatever you do, I'll just say, I'll just say you know, believe in God because the problems that I've faced, all the events, were very much influenced by my belief. Um, first of all, when I didn't believe in Him, they got worse, and when I started to believe in him, they got better. So 